Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, we're going to be learning about Carla Gerard. Her paintings are called contemporary folk art. That means that she is self-taught, and she lives in Maine, and she is still alive and working on beautiful paintings even today. I can't wait to teach you some of the different techniques that we're going to be doing to try to be inspired by her work, but we're going to be creating our own houses and our own landscape pictures today. Now, one thing that's kind of cool about Carla Gerard is that she hides an animal in each one of her paintings. So we'll have to be looking in our pictures today to see if we can find any of the animals she likes to hide. So let's get ready to do our own version of a contemporary folk house. Well, let's begin our beautiful folk art picture inspired by Carla Gerard. So a couple of things I want to point out before we begin our picture is that in Carla Gerard's painting, she loves to use lots of bright colors. Let me show you another painting by her. I think these paintings are so fun because she has this entire city stacked up on top of one another. These are two different paintings. They're similar, but you can see they're also different. They all have fun houses. They all have snow on top of the roofs. They all have different patterns on their rooftops and they all have snow. Now there's one thing that's a little bit different and that is I liked the sky better in this background. It's a little bit brighter. So that's why I decided to be inspired more by this pain. I had mentioned earlier that she hides animals in her picture. So I'm sure if you look closely, you can see what she's got hiding in her picture. She's got lots of black birds, maybe they're crows. And in the picture that we're going to be inspired by, she has something else. Can you find it? And it's down toward the bottom. Did you catch it? See, she's got a little kitty cat up on the roof. So today, it'll be kind of fun to see what we're going to be drawing today. We're going to be just taking parts of those houses and creating our own picture. You can see I hid a little bird right there in my tree. For today's lesson, you are going to need one piece of watercolor paper. You're going to need a Sharpie marker. You're going to need a pencil, an eraser, and either oil pastels or crayons. I'm going to be using oil pastels, but crayons will also work if you don't have those. And finally, you're going to need some watercolor paint to paint with. When we're working with watercolor, remember, we're going to need something to wash our brushes in, and you're going to need a paper towel. So I'm going to have you pause the video, go gather up these items, one piece of watercolor paper, a pencil, an eraser, sharpie marker, either oil pastels or crayons, watercolor paint, some water and a napkin or paper towel to blot your brush on. So pause the video, go gather those items up and meet me back here. Welcome back. You've got your watercolor paper. We're gonna be making our paper vertical, which is tall like a door. That way we'll have lots of room to create a couple different houses for our city. The name of the painting is actually called Winter City. We're also going to be combining um, a little bit of Sharpie marker in with oil pastels and watercolor. So this is going to be a fun project using lots of different mediums. So what I'm going to do is put the picture right here so we can begin to get inspired for our drawing. Now, the first thing I want you to notice when we are looking at this picture is that there is going to be a tree in the upper right hand corner and in the upper left hand area, we're going to be making a circle for the sun. So let's begin by doing that first. So I'm going to go over here to my left hand section right here and just draw a round circle for my sun. Later, we'll be creating it however you like. It doesn't have to copy exactly what she did. Next, we're gonna create a tree. So I'm gonna start my tree a little bit above the mid section of my paper because I wanna make sure that my tree is not taking up too much space. I'd rather have more room for houses. So here is about halfway up the side of my paper. I'm gonna go a little bit above that, make a little mark where I want my tree to start. And first thing I'm gonna do is just draw a short line like this, just to kind of begin the base of my tree. And the first line I'm going to do is going to go up toward the sun and 
that's going to curve around. Now you can see I am not going to be copying this picture exactly. I'm just being inspired by it. Next, I'm going to draw another curl coming off of the edge, similar to the way that Carla Gerard did hers. I'm going to add maybe a couple more on this side of the branch. And then a few on this other side. So that's my first branch that's coming off the edge here. And I'm going to draw one more branch up here at the top. I'm going to add a couple more swirls around the sides. And then I'm going to actually make this branch and this branch combine together to make the trunk of the tree. So now this branch is going to be a little wider and this branch is going to be a little wider. Now when I use my marker later, I'll make them much thicker. But for now, that's all I'm going to do. Just keep it pretty simple. So to create those houses, what we're going to be doing is just basically making some triangle shapes and rectangle shapes. Triangle shapes and rectangle shapes. Triangle and rectangle. Pretty easy. We're going to start over here at this section here and we're just going to draw a straight line that comes off the edge of the paper. So basically this tree is hidden behind this roof just like we see in this picture here. So bring it out partially across and then you're going to make an upside down V. Once you make that V, you're going to close it off at the bottom to make a triangle. And then you're going to continue this line all the way off the edge of the paper. So we've basically just built the roof of the house. Now we're going to draw the sides of the house. So we're going to bring it down part way. I don't want you to bring it too low because we want to have room to draw some more houses underneath it. And I'm going to continue that line down on this side. Don't worry about the lines being perfectly straight. It doesn't matter. You're going to be covering half of these up anyway. Now in the foreground, which just means the front, we're going to draw another house coming off the edge here. So it's going to cover up a part of this house. So if I look at this picture, there's a line that's coming on an angle from the side. So I'm going to do that right here. It's going to be coming across this area here. So it's going to be cutting off the bottom of this house. So I'm going to start over here on the side, draw a rooftop that's coming off to on an angle. You can make that come out as far as you'd like. And then I'm going to bring it back. Then I'm going to continue this line all the way down. And on this roof here, we can draw a wavy line to add some snow later, just like she did in her picture. Now later, we'll add also some fun windows. Up here on this one, you can also add a wavy line for the snow. and an extra line on this side for the snow that's on the edge of this roof. All right, let's go down to the center of our picture now, and we're going to build some houses here. So I'm going to look at this picture for inspiration, and I'm going to now draw a roof coming this direction. So I'm going to begin by drawing a straight line across, you can make it as high as you like. This angle roof is going to come this way. I'm going to go over to this side and I'm going to match this line so they're parallel. Now you might have made your roof a lot shorter than mine, that's fine. I'm going to close it off at the end. And then my wall is going to come down on the side. Now you can see it's kind of hidden behind this house. Yours might not be. Maybe you drew it over here and it, you're going to be able to draw the whole side of the house like this one. I'm going to continue my roof on this side, just making an upside down V. I'm going to extend this line coming down here. I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom. I might add another house right here. 
And if you want to add some snow on your roof, now's the time to make that wide wavy line. And you're gonna add a little extra snow on this side. All right, finally, we've got one section over here. You can draw a little mini house. You could draw a long, elongated house. You can look at this for inspiration. See if you see some style of house you wanna make. Look at that little small one right there. So I'm just gonna draw a basic house. This one's gonna be facing forward a little bit more, not on an angle. So I'm gonna be having my line go like this. And then come down on the side. I kind of like this house right here. The door is pretty cool. So I think I'm going to make an arched door. And my roof, I want it to have snow on top. Don't need that line right there. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four houses. That is good enough for me right now. If you'd like to add more, you could create another one here in the distance. You could have one over here in the background. You could make a tall house. You could add a chimney. If you're gonna add a chimney, it also needs to have snow on top. If you are going to make a chimney, let me show you how to do that. You're going to draw a few horizontal lines like this, and then you can draw some vertical lines on the first row. The second row, you want to make sure those lines do not line up with the first row. That's what's going to make it look like bricks. Okay, now we're going to create some really basic simple windows, but we're going to do all of that with our marker. So from here on out, we're going to be using our marker for all the details. Okay, let's get our Sharpie marker ready, and you're going to use your magic rub when we're all done. But before we begin, is there any lines that you don't want to ink over? You might want to go in and erase those right now, just so you don't get confused. I don't want to do all the detail with my pencil. You can't really do this project wrong, so let's just go ahead, create, and have fun. Let's start with the beginning, which is our sun, which is in the upper left corner right up here. And she put a star in the center of her sun, and you could do that. You could draw a heart in the middle. You could draw just a circle. You could put a happy face. It's totally up to you, whatever you want to draw. I'm going to do a little starburst. And then I kind of like how she did those radiating lines coming out from the side. So I think I'm going to copy that. And when I'm making my lines, I'm just going to go all the way to the edge of that pencil line. When I erase that pencil line later, um, this is going to form a circle. When I'm finished making my radiating lines, you might want to add some kind of detail on the ends. She made circles. I like that idea. I'm going to copy her idea. When I'm finished with my sun, it's time to now trace over my tree. So when you're working on your tree, I want you to notice that the tree trunk is wide. And as the branches extend out, they get skinny at the very tip. So you're going to want to narrow your branches as you start to trace over them. So what I'm going to do is trace both sides of the first trunk and branches. So I'm just going to go like this, just my widest area. And then I'm going to take one branch at a time and I'm going to trace it with my marker. I'm going to thicken them later, but for right now, I'm just keeping it really simple. I can even add more branches later, but I'm just going to keep it super simple right now and trace them the way I drew them. Now, once you have created this and you fill this area in and you fill in your branches, you're going to make them a little thicker as they come back and connect to the branch. That way they stay skinny at the tip and a little wider as they come back. 
Remember to always pull your marker to you. Try not to push your marker away from you. As you pull it, you might want to rotate your paper, which makes it a lot easier to pull the marker back to you. You'll find that you, you, your marker will last a lot longer if you're always pulling it and not pushing it. It helps it not to break the tip. And as you are finishing up your tree and you go in and you fill it in, remember long strokes as you pull it towards you to fill in that area. Once your tree is all completed, we can move on to the next step. So go ahead, pause your video, finish up your tree, and then meet me back here and we will move on to our houses. Okay, I finished my tree. Now I'm going to move on with my marker and start to outline the roof. So as I go across the top of this roof and the side of the roof here, I'm gonna kind of wibble wobble my line because that's gonna be where the snow is on top of my roof line. As I'm tracing over each one of the lines, I'm pulling my marker quickly toward me. And I'm going to continue going across each one of my houses until everything that I have drawn in pencil is outlined. Then we're going to go back in and do our detail work. So this part won't take you very long to trace over all your black lines. Go ahead and trace all of those lines and then come back and we will move on to the next step. I have finished try tracing all of my lines. Oops, I missed one right there. Let's move on to the next step. After we have traced over all of our pencil lines, we're gonna move in with our magic rubber eraser and clean up all of our pencil lines. And this is important that we do this carefully as we are erasing before we start using our oil pastel. Because once we get to oil pastel or crayon, we're not gonna be able to erase. So you wanna get that done now, making sure you haven't left any pencil lines, especially in the areas that we're gonna be coloring with white oil pastel or crayon because that's going to be the snow. One more spot. Don't forget it's up here in your sun. You want to erase all of that. The lines in that circle. Any pencil lines that might still be showing through your tree and down on your roof. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Now we're gonna go in and start to create some pattern. That's very important in our picture. As you can notice that Carla Gerard used lots of different patterns in her roof. She's got wavy lines, she has straight lines. Some of her straight lines go horizontal, some go, go vertical. She has some scalloped edges. She's got polka dots. So what you're going to do now is start creating some patterns. And we're also going to be creating some windows and doors. But let's work on our rooftops first. So on this roof right here, I think I'm going to copy her idea and do a wavy line. You do not have to copy what I'm doing. You can do your own style. In the front here, she did some lines that are going straight up and down. You could copy that or you could do polka dots. On this roof here, I think I'm going to be inspired by this rooftop here. Her lines are going on a diagonal, matching the same lines as the roof of the house. So I'm just going to pull my marker from underneath the snow across. I'm not worried about if all the boards are the same length or width, it doesn't matter. Now the next part to make it look a little bit more creative is you can see that she did kind of similar to the pattern that we did on our chimney where she's doing some lines. However, they don't match on each plank. They don't line up. So I like that idea. I think I'm going to do that. So my lines are going to be going straight just like this here. They're going to go horizontal. So I'm just going to go up here and make a few. And then my next board, 
I'm going to make less. I just want to make sure that they don't line up. She also did a couple that had two lines in them. So I think I'm going to copy that idea also. All right, when my roof is done, I'm going to move on to now choosing another pattern for my next roof. Let's see, do I have a roof? Oh yes, this one down here. So she did a scalloped edge, that's kind of fun. Look, fish scales. Does it kind of look like fish scales to you? You might be able to see them. If I hold that up a little closer to the camera. So I think I'm gonna copy that idea. So I'm gonna start up here at the top, making the letter U. And then I'm gonna continue the U's across. And in between each U, I'm gonna start the next row. Now, if you created more houses than I did, you have more roofs to work on. Now, our final part before we start to do our fun coloring is going to be designing some different doors and windows. Now, please be creative in this. Don't just make all of your doors square. As you can see, she made some doors that have an arch to them. She made some windows that have arches. Here's an arch door. She has these windows that are arched. She has square doors. She has a rectangle door. Some have window boxes underneath. So be creative and go ahead and fill in your house is making some fun doors and windows. By the way, as you're doing this, the windows don't have to match. You can have different shaped windows side by side. You can do a double line to make it also be a window frame. So you just can add an extra line around each space. And your windows and doors don't have to be straight lines. You can kind of give them a little bit of a curve to make them a little bit more whimsical. Some of your windows can have a window pane in them and some of them could be open. Don't forget to put doors so that we can enter those fun little houses. So the name of this painting is called Winter City. And I'm very curious if this is what her neighborhood looks like. I wonder if her houses are fun and colored differently like this. Where she lives, she lives in Maine. I immediately loved her artwork, number one. Her colors are so bright. She uses every color in the rainbow. Another thing that I really love about her artwork is that she must be an animal lover. She always hides. There's always either a cat, a dog, or birds somewhere in her picture. So of course, she knew I was gonna love those because that's something I love to teach you to draw as well. And once you have finished creating your houses, your little neighborhood, then we're going to move on to our final part, and that's going to be our coloring. I think we're going to put a window box here. I thought I was done, but there was one important thing that I forgot to add. It's something I had mentioned earlier in her pictures that she likes to hide. So what are you gonna hide in your picture? You could hide a bird somewhere. I hid a bird right here on my branch on my last picture. So to make my bird, I just made the letter U. And then I drew a straight line. You can make it angled. I filled this in, that's gonna be the tummy of my bird. That's gonna be the tail. For the head, I just came in the front here and just drew a little circle. Now your bird could be sitting. Your bird could have his mouth open. If you added one more line next to it, you could make the bird's mouth open. 
You could have the bird flying in the distance. You could draw a cat somewhere. See her cat? Maybe you want to add a cat on the roof somewhere. That doesn't look very hard. Let's see how hard it would be to draw a cat. Where could I put my cat? Right here? Let's see. I'm going to leave a little space for the legs. So the first thing I see is a rectangle. Easy. Rectangle. I don't want to make it too big. Next thing I see is four legs. And they're slightly curved forward. I see a curly tail in the back. A circle for the head. And two points for the ears. I'm gonna thicken up my cat, make her a little bit chubbier. So now we're going to move on to doing our coloring. We're going to be using either crayons or oil pastels for this part. So either one will work. I'm going to be working with oil pastels today. And the first color I'm going to be working with is white. So before you start to color with your white, I bet it's probably dirty. Even your crayon might be dirty. So I want you to make sure you have your napkin near you. And we're gonna be using our napkin to actually clean the tip of our crayon or oil pastel before we start. It's really important that we clean it before we start coloring with it. Otherwise, we're gonna get a lot of leftover color that might be on the edge of our crayon or oil pastel. And we kind of want our snow to be a pure pretty white later. So my tip looks pretty clean. I'm rubbing the sides of it a little bit as well. And now I'm going to go in and any place that I think I would like to have snow later in my picture, I'm going to be scribbling with the white oil pastel. So let's begin right up here on our tree. So if you look at your tree, when the snow is landing on your tree, all of the top of all the branches is going to have a layer of snow. So let's do that on our picture. Now, when I am coloring with my white oil pastel, I don't think it's going to show up on camera, but you'll know I'm pressing pretty hard and I'm just leaving a little layer of white right above each branch. So any place that the snow would land, which would be the top of these curves, it would also land right here in the bottom where that curves down right on the very top of that bottom branch as well. Now, my bird is so small. I'm not gonna put any snow on my bird, but that would be kind of funny if we put some snow on top of the bird's head. Maybe the snow would land right here too. Once I'm done with putting snow on my tree, I'm going to go across here, my first house, and I'm gonna press pretty hard and put some white oil pastel there and on the side of my roof here. I'm gonna do the same on the top of my chimney and each one of my houses. Now you wanna press with some firm pressure. Now if you're using crayon, do the same thing. You're gonna press with some firm pressure to get a nice coat of that oil onto your paper. Later when we go in with our watercolor paint, the watercolor is going to be resisting against that oil pastel or that crayon. The crayon is made of wax, oil pastel has an oily base and both do not work well with water. They resist one another. All right, so all of the roofs have snow. Also, my chimney has snow. So I think I'm done with my white oil pastel for now. Also, if you wanna put in a few dashes of white so when we paint this later, there'll be a, a little bit of a white impression there. You can do that. White's going back in my box. Next, we're gonna move on to the next lightest color in your box. So that's gonna be yellow. So go ahead and grab a yellow, either oil pastel or crayon. And as you can see, mine's got a dirty tip on it. So I wanna make sure I clean it first on my napkin before I start to color. I'm just gonna kind of rub it on my napkin, clean it off a little bit. I'm gonna go up here and pop in a few lines of yellow for my sun. Now it's important today that you don't color everything 
really hard with the oil pastel. We're just gonna be using a little bit of it in those areas because we want the water to be able to stick to the paper later when we paint. So we're not gonna be coloring really hard and firm with all the rest of these colors. We're just gonna be scribbling a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little yellow in this window, but as you can see, I still left some white paper showing through. That way my yellow paint that I use later can also attach to the paper. And I'm just going to try to use whatever color is in my hand three to four different times. So I want you to bounce around and pop this color somewhere else. So maybe do a window frame or a door frame or a part of the roof or one of the doors, do something else with that color that's in your hand. And you can see I'm not coloring it completely. I'm still leaving some paper showing through. Once you're done with the yellow, you're gonna move on to the next lightest color, which would be orange. My orange is really dirty, I'm gonna be cleaning that off and I'm gonna move on with my orange and do the same thing. You wanna use it in each parts of your picture. You want your eye to kind of bounce around and especially others that are looking at your artwork. You want their eye to bounce around. You don't want them all focused in one section. So go ahead and experiment with your color, leaving just a hint of that paper showing through. And if you want to color something, don't color all of it. For instance, if you want to color a door, just scribble a little bit. So that way the paint can attach to it later. I think I'm going to make the front of this house orange. But as you can see, I'm just gonna put a little bit of scribble in there. Still leaving some paper. And you're gonna continue through the rainbow using each one of the colors that you want to use in your picture. So I went with yellow. I like to go from light on the way through. So I went yellow, then orange. Now I'm gonna move on to red. Finding a place to use my red. I think I'm gonna make this house red. I'm still leaving lots of paper showing. I'm just kind of putting a light coat. I'm gonna make my fireplace with a little bit of red in it and pop it in somewhere else. So I think you're gonna get the hang of this as we keep doing this little by little. So what I want you to do is pause the video now and go through and scribble some colors in on each one of your houses. I would love you to use as many colors as you like, but remember you're leaving some paper so that we can paint it later. So go ahead, experiment, pause your video, finish up your house, houses, and then meet me back here and we'll start our painting. Well, when you look at my picture, one thing you might notice is I also went in and outlined my houses one more time just to kind of make them pop a little bit in the picture so they show up a little bit more. This is my style. This is not Carla Gerard's style. This is my style. I want this picture to be my picture, not exactly like Carla Gerard. So make sure you're doing something that makes your picture just your very own unique picture. Now the next thing I thought would be kind of fun is to maybe add some snow in the sky. And the way we're gonna do that is take our white oil pastel or crayon one more time, and we're gonna press it pretty hard onto the paper. Later when we paint over it with our blue sky paint, the white should pop through and resist the blue paint. So I cleaned my tip again. And I'm just gonna go in and actually press pretty hard and make some little dots. Now I know on the camera, these are not going to show up. I don't think you can see them. However, I know once I paint over them with my blue paint, they are going to show up. The resisting of the water against that oil pastel or that wax crayon that you are using is gonna be fabulous. Okay, I think I have enough snow in my picture. I have some smudgy fingerprints too because my hands get dirty when I work with oil pastels. That's all right. Now the next part of our project is gonna be painting. This is gonna be so much fun. So you're gonna need your napkin, your paper towel. I'm just gonna to flip mine over to the clean side. 
get your water near you. Now, if you're left-handed, you're going to put your tools on your left-hand side. If you are right-handed, you're going to be putting your tools on your right-hand side. So you can probably guess I am a lefty. So all of my things are going to be on my left-hand side here. I'm going to put my paint right here so that you can see it. And the first thing we're going to do is take some water. And we're going to be adding water to our paints so that they can start to soften up. Now, each time I do this, I like to start with the lighter shade first. I'm going to put some water in my yellow. I'm going to put some water in my orange. And I'm looking at the colors that I used in my project. And I'm going to be adding water to those so that they can start to soften up. As you keep working today using your paints, Remember, you want to use just a light coat of paint. You don't want it really thick and heavy. That way, when you're painting, if you keep it nice and watery, the water, remember, is going to resist that oil pastel or that crayon. I'm not going to be using any black today. I'm going to try to stick with some of these bright colors so I can match her style, Carla's style, Carla Gerard. So I'm gonna work on one color at a time. So let's experiment with some water in our yellow. I'm just gonna swirl my brush around. I cleaned my brush first, tap it once on my napkin so I don't have a big puddle on my paper. And all I'm gonna do right now is just slide it quickly across anything that I made yellow. I also have some spots up here where my sun is going to be. I'm going to put some yellow up there. I'm going to move in to my next color. I have some orange, so I'm going to go in with my orange. Tap it on my napkin. And any place where I painted orange, I'm going to lay my paint in. As you are working today, you want to work with a quick stroke. You're not trying to make it perfect. You're just kind of having fun. One thing I love about folk art is it's just really loose and free. It's fun. The colors are bright and vibrant. Nothing is lined up perfectly. The lines aren't straight. There's no rulers involved. You're just kind of having fun. And that's what I want you to do today. I, we've done so many projects where we worked really hard at trying to match something and be perfect. What I love about this style is that it's very loose and free. I'm moving into my red now. And in my watercolor set, my red kind of has an orange tint to it. You can always change the color of something by adding another color to it. So if you want to make a light orange, you could add water. If you want to make more a, 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 a pinkish red, you could mix a little pink into the lid of your paint set. And you could add the red to it and it will make a different shade of red altogether. So as you are working today, I hope you're having fun creating this project. So I'm going to keep working on mine. I'm going to have you keep working on yours and pause your video as you do that. When you come back, we'll finish up by doing our sky. So go ahead, have fun painting your picture, and then meet me back here. We'll do our sky together. Okay, we've got everything painted, and now we're going to work on painting our sky. You do not need to paint your sky blue. In Carla Gerard's painting, she has a beautiful sky blue color for her background. But as you can see from my painting, I made it a little bit different. I added some dark blue at the top and then faded it into light blue. When you are working with your sky, you want to work fairly quickly. And we're going to be working a small section at a time. We're going to begin by putting water down first. Just a little bit of water just to help our color spread. So I'm going to be working just in this upper left corner here this left area around the sun. I'm just putting a little water and then I'm going to add a few more drops of water to my blue paint. Now I have two different shades of blue in my watercolor set. You may only have one shade and that is absolutely fine if you only have one shade of blue because you can change the color by adding another uh, color to it. You could add a little green to it and you would get kind of a more turquoise blue. You could add purple to it and you could get a more 
periwinkle color. So you can create your own shade of blue. It doesn't have to be just what comes in your watercolor set. So you see, you see, I'm working pretty quickly. I'm just adding water and then adding the water that's floating on top of my blue paint along. And then I'm gonna pull that color across my paper so that I don't have any puddles. And as I'm working, especially if I put the color down a little bit brighter, you'll notice that the water resists the oil pastel. So my little snowflakes are showing through. I was hoping they would. I'm hoping that yours are also. Now, as you are painting your sky, remember that you can switch the color if you want to change it up and add a different shade. So this blue is a little bit different. It's more of a sky blue. So I'm gonna add some water and you'll notice I'm painting right over my tree and that's because we worked with a Sharpie marker. So you can do that when you're working with a permanent marker like a Sharpie marker. The watercolor will not smear the ink. So now that I've added the sky blue, my sky is changing. If I added a little bit of green to my color, it's going to have a different shade of blue altogether. It's going to be more turquoise. So I'm going to add a little bit of green over here just to experiment, just to change the color up a little bit. My paper's starting to curl up. Is yours doing that too? What I do is I just kind of set my finger down on a spot that's dry. And then I just kind of move my paintbrush around with that water to kind of help spread that color. You don't want to go over your paints too much though as you're working because the more that you keep playing with it, the more your paper is going to start to dissolve. It actually will start to fall apart. Now, once my painting's all dry, then I can lay a heavy book on top of it to flatten it out. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. I hope you had fun today learning how to paint our pretty folk art picture. We did a beautiful color scheme with all these fun colors of the rainbow. We've learned about Carla Gerard, who is a contemporary folk artist. And I had so much fun working with you today. I hope you had fun and I will see you for our next lesson. So see you next time. Have a great day.